Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life. Boy, do I have a case for you today. It is one that is in the headlines. So many of you guys have been requesting it. It's really a cross between like Manson, Menendez, just pure evil. I mean, it's crazy. And this one is a long one because I have got a lot of footage and a lot of details to share with you. There will be a part in the middle of the video-ish where I let you know that you can fast forward if you want, if you want to skip over a piece and, you know, shorten the video up a bit. But buckle up because we have got a lot to talk about. So smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let's get into it. Sense of life with Annie Elise starts right now. All right, guys. So as I mentioned, my name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to life where we talk all things true crime. So if you are brand new stopping by for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy today's video and hearing what I have to say. And if you do, and if you want to show support to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. And for all of you returning subscribers, welcome back. And you're going to think this one's crazy, and a lot of you guys have been asking for it, so blame yourselves. It's your fault, but let's get right into this case. All right, so as I mentioned, this is in the headlines right now. It is ongoing, and it is one of the more brutal cases I have not only talked about, but that I have heard of. So without further ado, guys, let's just dive right in. Bart and Krista Halderson are 50 and 53 years old. They are the parents of two boys, Mitchell and Chandler. The family all live in Dane County, Wisconsin, and were what seemed to be a completely normal and happy family. Bart and Krista were described as kind, caring, gentle, and very, very loving. Bart was an accountant and a tax manager, and Krista worked in customer service. However, in early 2021, just this last summer back in July, this happy family and these two loving parents would be absolutely ripped apart by tragedy and a truly gruesome crime. So how and where did things go so terribly wrong for these two lives that were lost just last July? We're going to talk about that. Bart and Krista had two sons, as I mentioned, Mitchell and Chandler, and they both seem to be very successful young adults. Chandler is 24 years old and seemed to be the most impressive because of his age. He was attending college classes at Madison Area Tech University, and he worked at an insurance company while going to school full time. In addition to that, he worked with police as a scuba diver and had a job waiting for him at SpaceX in Florida with Elon Musk after he was set to graduate. I mean, by all means, a very successful kid, someone that any parent would be extremely proud of. This really did seem, guys, like a cookie cutter family. You have two young sons, these loving parents who are still in a happy, loving marriage, which I feel like is so rare these days, and it took a complete turn for the worse in July. Because on Wednesday, July 7th, after not returning from a 4th of July weekend getaway, Chandler, the 24-year-old son, reported his parents as missing at approximately 11.30 a.m. Chandler stated that his parents left for their cabin up in Langland County and that they left early morning July 2nd for this long weekend and that they had left before he even had woken up. He said that he had helped them pack up and that his parents went with friends, but that he didn't know which friends he went with exactly and that the friends were the ones who picked the parents up, that they did not drive themselves. So the deputy that was taking this report went out to the family home and upon entry and arrival, he noticed that there appeared to be sections removed from the flooring, as well as outlines of half of a wall right next to the front door, which was no longer there. The detective also noted that both of the parents' vehicles were in the garage, and Chandler said that he had driven both vehicles since they left, because remember, they were picked up by friends of theirs that he didn't know who they were. He said that he had concussion symptoms and that his mother was on medications, and it was just a little bit of a weird circumstance all the way around. The detective also found a note that, according to Chandler, had been left by his mother, and that note read, I hope you're doing okay if you need anything, 
contact me. Chandler told the police that he had helped his parents pack up for this trip, packing up tools, including a pipe wrench, hatchet, and gas cans for their chainsaw. He said his mom texted him on Sunday, July 4th, and that nothing had appeared to be out of the normal. Chandler also gave an interview to a local news station and stated, We'll find them. It's better to not listen to the negative theories. Adding that his mother had texted him to say that the couple had arrived at their cabin safely, but then apparently they had just vanished into thin air. And that is what prompted him to file that missing persons report because he at that point was extremely worried. He also added that maybe they're at a casino, maybe their phones are off with no reception, maybe they're on a boat having some fun with their friends. I don't know, but something feels afoot. I want to ask you is just if there's any information that you feel like you know would be worthwhile for us to share anything that you feel like is is important for us to share just anything anything like that of that mm -hmm. nature um so my last uh, message i got from them they were going to white lake for the fourth of july there's some festivities that go around there you know better drink prices at the bars mm -hmm. stuff like that for um yeah white lake wisconsin mm -hmm. um other than that, their plan, or from to my knowledge, they're going to Langlade County to a cabin, uh, their cabin. Um, along the way, they could have stopped many places. Uh, I wouldn't know all of them. Mm. Mm. But it's about three hours north of Madison, or Dane County. Mm. Mm. And they left then uh, a week ago today, on the first? Friday. Friday. Friday morning. So, so that would have been the second, right, of July when they left. And that's the last you'd heard of them. Yes, it is. And then was it yesterday that you called the sheriff's office or someone with your family called the sheriff's office just to... Oh, I, I go back on that. Norris. I actually um, got a text from them on Sunday telling me they were going to White Lake. Okay. I don't know when the text was sent because of reception issues that they would have. And they usually turn their phone off because of pay for roaming. Yeah. Um, we They... It could have been whenever they sent that message that they made it safely, and they're going to White Lake for the fourth. Okay. So. Yeah. So it was probably the last couple of days that you started to get nervous. Yeah. Then, um, is there a people? You know, we see comments. People say, you know, are they up north? Is the cell service bad? You know, could they, yeah. you know, just not be able to get a hold of? Is there anything that you feel like is kind of going on here that? leads you to be a little bit more nervous that that's not the case um my aunt went up there and was able to call me okay. at the, at, while she was at the cabin okay so she was able to call me i don't know what provider she's using mm -hmm. but u.s cellular would take up most of wisconsin so like they'd be able to call today mm -hmm. because this weekend it was packed i i get that packed maybe the weather wasn't great for messaging mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. Who knows? And then the other thing I wanted to ask you about was <clears throat> the or a lot of the comments people were concerned or kind of wanted some clarification about the vehicle, right? Because the reports mm -hmm. from the sheriff's office say they, they didn't have a car or there wasn't a car with them. Yes. They brought or they were picked up by their friends. Okay. Who I never got the name of. And I, I assumed it was someone I was aware of. Like uh, close neighbors of theirs up the street or um, their best friends down on the east side so that's what I assumed I never really asked any further in it to, into it and so they got picked up and they all went up there by like another couple picked up here yeah here at my house okay before I woke up they, they had everything packed up and jeez go. and do you, you don't know who they're who no. jeez and that's uh I mean that that has happened before where they just kind of head out before I leave or I wake up you know I'm heavy sleeper mm -hmm. I, I'm on a schedule I wake up at six to feed the dogs and they were out before six mm -hmm. to feed the, the rush to get to the north mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so by all accounts a very concerned son and an extremely worrisome situation police immediately started working to come up with a timeline to talk to people and to figure out how these two parents mysteriously went missing on this long weekend holiday getaway. And law enforcement released a statement saying, our investigation began on Wednesday, July 7th, when Chandler reported his parents missing at approximately 11.30 a.m. that day. According to Chandler, his parents had left their village of Windsor home early Friday morning with an unknown couple to spend the 4th of July holiday weekend at their cabin in White Lake. 
but they did not return as expected. Now, a coworker of Krista's, the mother, that it was very unusual for Krista not to show up for work and that she was a very responsible person. But what's crazy about this is that he says Krista did not show up for work on Friday, July 2nd, that same day that they left for the cabin. And again, he says this was very unlike her and no one was able to get in contact with her. Now, because this was the day of that weekend getaway to the cabin, it begs the question, was she already missing before this getaway was set to take place? Or did she in fact go on this getaway and just was a no-show to work because she wanted to play hooky for the long holiday weekend? So this man who was reporting this to the deputy then decides to stop over at the family home and he saw both vehicles in the garage, which he considered very unusual. He looked through the front door and there was a table on its side. He eventually ended up speaking to their son Chandler, who had just gotten out of the shower and had a piece of gauze or a bandage on his foot. Hmm. He said his parents were picked up by another couple around 5 a.m. that day for some type of problem in the cabin. A little bit different than a getaway. He said that his foot was injured when he had thrown a ball or was playing with the dogs and had broken the fireplace. Chandler said something to the extent of, there was blood everywhere inside the home as a result of this cut on his foot almost trying to, in my opinion, prematurely justify possibly why there would be blood residue everywhere. Just a theory, but I could be wrong. We'll get to it. So later on July 4th, Chandler ended up contacting the same man and told him that he ended up getting a hold of his parents and said that everything was fine and that his parents would return on Tuesday. Now, this is a red flag because we already know at this point Chandler had told the officer that the last time he heard from a parent, his parents was that text message from his mom on July 4th. Now he's saying that they're going to return on Tuesday. I don't know. Again, maybe nothing, but doesn't seem like his stories are really adding up here. Then on July 7th, just a few days later, detectives spoke with a woman who invited Chandler to her family home for dinner, and she said that Chandler's claim of Bart and Krista going to the cabin with an unknown other couple was completely out of character for them. Chandler claimed that Bart had taken a large amount of cash as well to this cabin, which was also apparently very unlike Bart because Bart was a cheapskate. But remember, Chandler was claiming that possibly they were in a casino and didn't have their phones on, and now he was saying, you know, that he also took a large sum of money with him. Chandler also claimed that his parents brought alcohol with them, which was also, according to this person, very out of character and unlikely because allegedly Bart and Krista were both very light drinkers. This woman continues to go on describing Krista as a very doting parent who was very involved in both of her son's lives. Just complete astonishment to everyone nobody knows what's going on and everybody is saying that this is completely out of character for them on july 8th police contacted chandler's girlfriend's mother's girlfriend who said chandler had come to their property on july 5th the day after the 4th of july and he was driving his family's blue subaru outback he asked to go swimming at their pool and was gone for about an hour to an hour and a half but when he returned he was not wet and the cover of the pool was not off And after that, she saw him in the pool and he appeared to be washing off something. They had also previously spoken about target shooting and he had mentioned that he had a rifle that he could bring to target shoot with them. So now you have a weapon in the mix of everything. You have him asking to go swimming, but then, and he's gone and disappears for an hour and a half, didn't go swimming, isn't wet, then finally gets in the pool and it looks like he's washing himself off. Not good. She also reported seeing vultures circling above the woods of her property. Not a good sign. And this prompted authorities to search that property. While searching, authorities saw a light mound covered in foliage, sticks, and leaves. And upon investigating, they recovered a human torso. They could see the human remains that had been mutilated and dismembered. The torso belonged to a white man. It was clothed in gray cargo style pants, a black belt with a nylon black rope around the waist, with three to four feet of the rope loose and had no shirt on. At least three gunshot wounds were also found on the dismembered torso, including one where the entry wound came at close contact to his back. 
as if he were shot directly in the back. They also found a tank that had scissors, a saw blade, and possibly bolt cutters in it. The saw blade had a slimy appearance that could be fatty tissue. I mean, I can't even imagine discovering this, guys. Like, I would be absolutely horrified. And that day, Chandler officially turned from a person of interest into a suspect. And as all of this was unfolding, Chandler actually called the police department and said that he found a spare set of keys for the cabin. He also called around 3.30 to check in on any possible changes to the case, and he let the detective know that he noticed more of a police presence in front of his home and that four officer cars were parked outside of his house. The detective reassured him and simply told him it was a shift change and not to worry because he did not want to tip Chandler off that they were now looking into him. Later that day, Chandler went into the sheriff's office for a two-hour review. They talked about the days leading up to the disappearance, as well as the disappearance itself. And Chandler said that on the past Wednesday, it was a bad day, that he and his father were watching Wheel of Fortune and his mother, mother was at work. He said he tossed the ball and smashed a glass with the dog's help and that that set his father off. Then he said they tried to clean it up, but Chandler was injured and his dad was mad. Towards the end of the interview, detective says, we know your parents are no longer with us and we know you know the reason why. Your parents never made it to the cabin and we think you know that. So now I'm gonna play this interrogation video for you and I wanna warn you, it's pretty long, but it's also pretty interesting when you see what he says, the behaviors, that's why I am including it in here even though it makes the video so much longer because I feel like it is really fascinating to watch. So. For all of you true crime junkies who love this kind of stuff, you'll probably want to sit through and watch it. But if you want to fast forward, now would be the time to do so. And then we will pick back up after the interrogation. In the morning, I'm a little worried about my family. I think I called my mom. Oh, throughout, I've called. I, I don't know the times, though. Throughout the weekend, I mean. But I called my mom, I believe. In the morning, there's along those lines, and I get a text from her. It was a text message. It wasn't even my message, so mm -hmm. I assume she said White Lake today. So she sent it that day. Um, I couldn't figure out where she was because it was a text. There was no I message, so I kind of just like left it at that. They're safe. They're alive. Then um, it's the afternoon. I'm talking to Dan. I call him up and I ask him, well, what he's doing. Or maybe that was the morning, but I, I called Dan that Sunday. I asked him what, he, what he's up to, if he wanted to hang out. Uh, I don't like being alone at the house very long. Dan is mom's co-worker slash friend? Yeah, he's okay. this guy. Um, go over there. For, he invited me for fireworks in his, in his driveway. Um, he said, or you said yesterday he lived in DeForest or Windsor or one of the other? Yeah, close. Okay. Uh, I can I can point it at a map. One or the other. I think it's so okay. throughout the day, um, the dogs, it's just me and the dogs, the fireworks and the dogs are like running around and into things. I'm trying to keep them okay. All they're doing is knocking stuff over, spilled their water. They haven't eaten. They won't go outside for me. Um, even on a leash, I couldn't get them out. What was the deal with that? The fireworks. Oh, the fireworks are spooking them so much. Yeah, all yeah, day. I gotcha. So I, I put them both into the, the fort, cranked the TV. Did that seem to help at all with them? Yeah. The, the, the loud TV helped. Um, Rizzo doesn't like, or maybe does like, New Girl, the TV shows, so we watched that. <laughs> It's the theme song that gets her, I think. She parts. <laughs> um, so we watched that. 
Um, Izzy fell asleep, so Izzy's the the old dog, the older one. But so it was Sunday. Right? Sunday evening, cat comes by to help me with the girls. So uh, she, she wasn't there during the day. No, no, it was just me and the dogs. She left set a Sunday morning. Okay. From the no, no, she left. Saturday morning because I spent oh, Saturday by Saturday. myself. Was, I see that. And yeah. then Sunday, it was just me and the girls till whenever Cat got there. We didn't eat together, I don't think. No, this is Sunday. This is Sunday. So I went to Cat's house on Sunday. I actually, yeah. So that was Sunday morning is when I left the girls. So all of Sunday morning, I had the girls in the fort and we watched New Girl. I went to Kat's house Sunday to eat, but we ended up not eating there. We went to um, Cress's house. It's Cottage Grove or Cascade? No, Cedarburg. It's a sea town area okay um so where is it near it, i've it's never cress cress oh chris Cressy. so cress is you've seen her on my phone yeah yeah i saw the calls to her she that's your helps me out with everything cats mom's girlfriend mom's girlfriend okay cats, I, mom's girlfriend. I try to talk to her as much because she's like i don't know why isn't she really helps me with what's going on with me because i'm been in a slump, I'd say. Okay. But, um, All right. So went to Cat's house Sunday to eat. What time do you think you went over there? Food at 3.30. That's what they said. So about 3, 3, 3, 3.30 you went over to Cat's? Oh, I was at Cat's well before. I was at there noon. Okay. Noon, let's say. Noon. Where does Cat live? The east side. East side of Madison? I... Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know the. I'm sure I could look it up, but do you know the road at all or anything? Taffelger or Andrew Lane Taffelger. Okay. I'll look it up. That's fine. We're in the. So you went, met her Sunday about noon. Yeah. Um, what'd you guys do at her place? Well, she realized my legs. I wouldn't be able to do stuff with them. So her, her brother, and her brother's date went to a thrift store while she had me sleep just okay. right, she so. just put me to bed and they went and then they get home around 2 30 cat and i rush back to my house let the girls out and we go back straight to the farm okay were you at the farm before you went to let the dogs out or no we were at cats like it's okay. like a duplex. So cat's cat's house Sunday around noon. Um, you went to sleep with well, cat, her sister, her brother, cat's brother, and his date, and his date. Okay, sorry about that. Went to a thrift store. Then, then we went to Cress's, and we ate. Um, after that, James left after dinner leaving his date with us and we, we took a swim. After the swim we we left, um, went to Kat's house to drop off his date. The date stayed at Kat's house. Uh, I think the date is a rose maybe is what her name was. Rose. Um, Had you ever met her before? No, this was a Tinder match from her brother, Kat's brother. Okay. Um, what time do you suppose you guys went to Cress's house? So, got to Kat's around noon, went to sleep. We got back. Okay. Kat and I went to my house to let the dogs out, then we left. Oh, I think we got gas. And then we went to Cress's, so I'd say we got to, it was maybe four when we got there. We were late for dinner. 
But it was good because they were still setting up. Where'd you guys get gas at? Do you remember that? One of the quick trips in town. I, I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, when you say in town, are we talking DeForest? Sun Prairie? DeForest, it had to be. Okay. I think we got, I, I'm still not super sure, but I know we, we were doing something on the way, or we didn't do something. I thought we were going to do a return, but I'm jumbling it right now, mm -hmm. so just have that, we went to my house and back to Crest because we were late. Okay. For dinner. What were you guys driving? Were you in your... Cats, what? Red, Subaru. Okay. Was she driving or you? She, she okay. drives that cat to her car. Red Subaru, you said? Yeah. She, okay. It's at my house right now. Oh, okay. And you rode with her? Yes. Um, Where'd you guys go for a swim? There's like a little pool up at the Crisis house. Oh, she she's has, been she helping me with my, my walking and everything, and they get me there. Okay. Is it indoor or outdoor? Outdoor. It must have been nice with how hot it has been. Yeah, they, they got something fancy to heat it from the sun. Okay. But that was the three of us. Yeah. Then we went back to around six, no later, maybe seven. We went back to Kat's apartment, dropped off Rose, got Kat's dirty or wet clothes she had wet clothes because she was going to dry them and we went to my house together so rose got dropped off at cats yeah the duplex okay. in the east side okay was james with you guys at that point or no james left after dinner around 4 30. Oh, okay um, Did, was he not getting along with Rose, or? No, he had, he had work. Oh, okay. Um, well, that sucks. Working on the 4th of July. Yeah, um, something. So you drop, did Rose get dropped off at Cat's duplex then? Yes. We'll refer to Cat's house as a duplex. Yep. Cress, Cress is the farm. Yep. Throw berries. Yep. My house is my house. That's how we refer. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, where are we? Sunday night, about seven. Sunday Drop night, Rose about off seven. Cats. We get Rose dropped off. We get to my house. And we go to my house in DeForest, yep. Windsor. We feed the girls. We put her clothes that she brought, the wet stuff, in the dryer because that's what she needed to do. We get her clothes dry. Uh, that's after we get back, actually. Um, and then we go to dance. Okay. Um, for the fireworks. But he asked us to come by 8.30. Um, for some reason, I, I was trying to leave, but I was making a a joke about it that we we're we're gonna be late like stuff like that goofy crap uh, i drove to dance okay which car were you guys in my dad's Subaru. also okay. blue the one in the garage yeah gotcha then we get there we stay for 45 to an hour was, that's how i got the bottle rocket marks show me those in that Oh, it's a spark. Right, you said and I think this was something. a wad or something that oh, flew back. Shot back out of it. Yeah, that one stuck in for a little bit. That's why it's so bad, but these are sparks. Okay. Those are a dance house you got those? Dance. A dance. I, I didn't know the stick. You, you, were, you don't hold yeah. the stick. The stick <laughs> flies with it. Oh, well, <laughs> sure. I didn't know. <laughs> um.
So you're over at Dan's house, oh, okay. about 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, get my hands a little bit. Uh, we find a firework that it spins and takes off, and it went straight to the bush. So we were like, no more of that. We're done. Um, Did it light the bush on fire? No, no, it thankfully it wasn't hot enough for that. Good. After that, we cleaned. I gave him a bottle of wine as a thank you for letting us come. I, it, thankfully, I still have a couple bottles at home. Um, while we are there, Dan had a few beers. His girlfriend was there, or fiance, or, or wife. I'm not sure their relationship. But she was there. No name? Never got her name. Just Dan's girlfriend. She's got purple mm -hmm. hair. She's IT cool. at MATC. Mm -hmm. The school's own IT. Okay. Anybody else there? Just the two of us, and then the neighbors watched. One to our left, and one across the street. Mm -hmm. One group. Um, the one across the street had some cooler stuff than I've ever seen a person be able to own, firework-wise. Um, but there, there we are. And then, then someone in the distance, kind of closer to our house, launched a, a mortar artillery firework. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, we have to go home for the darts. So we went. And that was pushing 9.30, 9.45. We got home. We uh, got into the couch for it. And put on Daybreak was the apocalypse show. Daybreak. Um, uh, put on that because we're trying to finish it. On Netflix? Yes. Um, this is Cat and I still. Yeah. She was spending the night. Um, the whole time, dogs are pushing me, nosing me, and everything. And so we kind of stop and, and stop watching, and she goes to bed. Um, I'm trying to let the dogs out, or at least go back in a little bit. But the fireworks, they, she, the, they mm -hmm. couldn't. Um, we get to bed upstairs in my room uh, because she doesn't like the couch and she had work in the morning yeah and I'd say that's 10-ish 10 10 10.30 and the whole time the younger dog keeps jumping on us um, so I leave Cat in the bed and I go sit out out down in the 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 couches and chairs down by the real dinner table. Mm -hmm. I go sit there and just hang out with the dogs so I can't get asleep. Where we first started talking last night? Yes. Like the, the dog, main kitchen, door. dining room, and the couches? Okay, gotcha. I sit down there so I can get some sleep because I don't work tomorrow. She does. Mm -hmm. um, then I put the ladder in front of those steps so the girls can't come up. I, uh, they pee on the kitchen the tiles so I clean that and like well at least they went before bed you know mm -hmm. it wasn't the worst thing they're not gonna go outside yeah then I go to bed okay. then it's Monday morning cat goes to work 7.50 ish maybe earlier then I'm left to myself so we put on new girl in the couch for it on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. I go back and forth through some video games and then back video games. Back and then those don't like to stand up very good. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm trying to stretch a little bit while I'm sitting. Um, so we grow video games. This is Monday. 
Um, again later, I have a little bit to eat for lunch. I, well, at the end of the day on Monday, I did go, for the afternoon, I did go to the farm to talk to Cress and Kat's mom. I told them what's happening with my health because I had the appointment at 2. Did you go to the farm before or after? After, the because okay. I told them what happened to me. And I told them the legs are probably going to be permanent and the headaches should be fixed after the hemorrhage is cleared a little bit. So, now that I'm there, I talked to their mom, um, and Crest together, and I think Kat's mom is all right with me. She's, I don't know if she wants me to move into her, the east side Cat's house okay. and start paying rent as an apartment because she doesn't like to live at home. Does Cat live with her mom or? Cat has an apartment. Okay. Somewhere. Cat does? Yeah, it's on, it's by Mifflin. Okay. The party avenue, it's by there. Um, okay. So I'm there talking to their mom and Chris. Then I, um, then I go up to have, you know, a break down by the shed and they go swimming. Um, right by the swimming pool is the shed, so they they wanted to watch me, like, you know, break down and all that, so after I noticed they're just watching, I just walk over to them. Describe your breakdown to me. Uh, I actually cried. <laughs> Started kicking grass, just doing the toddler tantrum shit. Um, then I hopped in the water with them. Okay. So it was uh, too late. Uh, I was in the water, and I realized Crest didn't have a top, okay. um, and that was uncomfortable. But I talked to them more, and that's when she brought up the housing situation, how she doesn't like how my parents, like, are, I guess. I don't know if she doesn't, she doesn't know them that well. She never met them. Okay. Chris was saying that? And Kat's mom. You know, okay. Kat's mom is, uh, speaks, is, her first thought right away. Yeah. So she's, so they're offering me to get a job live with them, work for them while I'm working, and pay rent. And that's kind of their, their deal. I would have like a month free of rent, or a month or two maybe, if, if they're thinking. Mm -hmm. um, I could be able to borrow a car from Crest maybe if she's nice or not using it, I'd be able to go to work. And she have a lot of cars or something? No. No? Okay. Just an extra one probably. She stays at the farm. Okay. So if she didn't need it, I could use it sure. to go to a job or at least interviews. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping for a job, you know, near where I live so I could bike. Uh, that would keep me, you know, yeah. these going. I don't want to, I don't think they can get worse, but <laughs> I, I could keep doing it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, Where are we? Sunday. So you Sunday. were swimming, um, had a little okay. breakdown. What were you having a breakdown about? You ever have your legs kind right. of yeah. No, I haven't. It's just, okay. just, I don't even know if they're done eating like as bad as they, they can be yet. So yeah. that's a, that's not fun. And you, I think you were telling me last night it was it's a symptom of a concussion, right? So Is that right? that's not it. That's a, it's a symptom of nerve damage from the hit oh, to my spine. So okay. it's permanent. Okay, I understand that now better. Yeah. Um, so it's just legs. I think it's a waste feeling is probably colostomy bag down the road and all of that. But 
Here we are Sunday. Yeah. Okay, we're sitting in the pool, we're hanging out. Um they're just talking to me. Sometimes they're being nice, sometimes they're like making the offer, like, hey, if you move in, you can pay rent. This is a good neighborhood. Um, it's a cul-de-sac. There's parking. So, yeah, on the east side, just off of Milwaukee Street, that's uh, Andrew. Andrew. Oh, okay. You take a left turn onto Andrew down Milwaukee. Yep. No. So, that's it. Um, so, it's a good neighborhood. Kind of like the one by my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, if I lived there, I'd at least be on doing my own thing. And then they're like, well, appreciate you stopping by. So I, I, I head out and I go, it was Monday afternoon, I go to dinner at Cat, Cat's house on the east side. Okay. What time do you think that was? Had to be 7.30, I left the farm, which is Cress's. 7.30 p.m. Cress's is the farm. Okay. So, uh, we're at Cats. And then she's, she's planning on feeding me. Um, this is Monday, correct? Yeah. It's after the farm, so I'm press. I think we just eat and cuddle a little bit. Okay. When I go home, there's the girls. Um, let them out and go to bed because I kind of had a day. Yeah. What time do you think you left her place? Cat's I'd say place? nine. Didn't left about nine, okay. Um, she didn't come with you? No, I was okay. alone that night. Okay. Um, I don't really want to drag her away. Sure. Uh, I think she stayed at her apartment that, or her house that night, not apartment. Okay. So, there we are. Tuesday, Tuesday morning. It was just... Um, oh, Dan wakes me up, I believe, with something, or not wakes me up, I, I did the six again with the dogs and the food, but I got back in bed. I don't know if I passed out or zoned out a little bit, but, um, Dan is worried about my mom on Tuesday, I think. Did he call I or said text no, her? no word, my mom. I don't know if he called or okay. I, I think he just contacted. That's what I can think of. Reached out. Yeah. yeah, he reached out. Then I'm like, oh, it's Tuesday morning. They should be here. Um, a little worried. I think I called my mom that day. All right. And then... You dropped her? No, she never picked up. It's, it's always either. It's always the... the the voicemail and send voicemail. You know when you oh, yeah. So it's off out of range. I don't know the other factors that could give you that. It's like a voicemail right away. It goes right to voicemail, right? Yeah. Okay. So whatever factors can give you that. So I might have missed it. So from the time like they left, did you talk to them at all when they were I got a up text. north? You got the one text. Yeah, and I that you mentioned earlier. Don't even like it. Right? Yeah. But it's, that was it? Nothing else. Yeah. So that's that's fishy to me, even the text, because I realized Memorial Day is when the White Lake Parade is. Oh, sure. There's no 4th of July. Maybe there's cheap drinks, but there's no parade on okay. White Lake on the 4th. So, well, maybe there is now. I realize I, I've always gone on Memorial, because that's when that's the sure. weekend I, I get time off from school and all of that, you don't get time off for the 4th. So so basically from the time that they're gone at the cabin in your home, you know, running around doing what you're doing, 
you just said one communication with mom. Yeah, that's kind of how it be. I just assumed the amount of people, the where they're at, and where sure. they're all. Well, I understand. I'm just, I'm just making sure it was more than one. Her not contacting, but this was the only text. Was there anything with dad? No, I, I only even bother talking to him. He, he wouldn't use his phone while he's up there. He, he loves it. Oh. Just like, but, you know. Does he keep his phone on him when he's up there? Oh, it's, probably, it's usually in the car. Oh, okay. Um, my brother and I just text all the time while we're up there. We even set up wire antennas sometimes to make make better connection. Sure. Um, okay. So here we are. Where? Tuesday. Um, called mom. Voicemail immediately. Voicemail immediately Tuesday. -ish. Where? Dan Dan called, worried about mom not coming to work. Um, you had already fed the dogs and that before Dan called in or reached out to. I got, I got a coffee at a quick trip one day. Well, I think that could have been Tuesday morning. Okay. At quick trip, I got a coffee. And I, um, I used my dad's number at a quick trip to get me the free one. Because it was the of gold. Yeah. I, I could have I afforded it, but, you know, there's a free one. And it's Tuesday or it wasn't Monday. I could have gotten a dollar one. But it was full price, I believe. And I, I grabbed the the coffee because it was a free one he hasn't used it for weeks so I grabbed that I had a quick trip I couldn't tell you which one I was just driving at that point um when you get when you use a it's a rewards card is what they call it right yeah you need to center his phone number or something it. you type it okay um but I got a coffee had to be I'm assuming Tuesday and I got a free one Sweet. It's it was terrible. Oh, it was. I yeah, I wanted to try Karuba Gold. Yeah, it, it wasn't, wasn't bad. bad. Um, then we're at Tuesday. Uh, cat's working up my gaming job hunt, and then I um, then I started trying to get the the glass. So I've <laughs> been a little lazy on the glass. I just kind of had chairs in front of it. I just a broom and. You know, a little sweeper holder, you know, you broom it into that dustpan. Yeah. And I'm tossing the glass into recycling. Um, I get most of it. There's, there's a bunch in the cracks of the stone that I'm picking out by hand. I, think I didn't injure myself from that, but um, just, yeah. Okay. Just um, my blood was kind of on the floor, so I got the Swiffer I borrowed from Cat from the the foot. I borrowed a Swiffer to mop. I Swiffered the the floor floor, like not the stone, but the floor. And then I got a little bit in the kitchen, and then everywhere kind of I walked pretty much the the bathroom, the kitchen. And then I, I couldn't get the carpet, so I still stained that up a little crappy. Where was um, there a carpet at? The Grand stairs River. between basement and kitchen. Carpet. Oh, that's right. Carpet stairs. Um, I tried. I can't get it out. I don't know how to do that, but um, then all the way up to my the laundry room where I found my first aid kit. I just tried to stop all the bleeding, but I. You know, it wouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. So and that blood was all coming from your left foot. Yeah, left foot hole. Left foot hole. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're talking. Are we talking massive amounts of blood? Or are we talking, you know, a little bit, like described? Um, it started as drops until I got to the bathroom, 
And then I got back to go grab my sock and some of the, the paper towel. And then I see the glasses in there, so I grab a tweezers and I pull it out. And then it starts mm -hmm. squirting out. And I, I got some on a, a little bit of the rock. It wasn't that bad of the rock, but it, um, I think the worst was the that floor that like it kind of like you know like this lid puddles mm -hmm. it was it wasn't good we were talking the floor down in the basement well that one um and then i go upstairs to the kitchen and it's still going and i'm trying to get my foot in the sink just to slow it down and pinch it maybe okay. um and then I waddle upstairs to the the eye the packer, the, the first, aid, first kit. aid kit. And um, once I got it kind of bundled up, that's it stopped for, for what I know. Then I go, I need to get some tape. Um, we have a tape box in the basement. I go there and I, I opened it up again. I bled a little bit more, but the basement was easy to clean. It's just cement. Mm -hmm. just a little bit of water and I rigged that up. But I grabbed the tape box and I wrapped it. Um, after that, that was, that's Tuesday? Yep. That's Tuesday. Wings. I go to Cats. Oh, okay. We had wings. What time? Um, I think they've been, I've been doing the BS of first aid and all that. I go to Cats' house with her mom and her brother. That could have been five or six. I think it would be exact. Did you guys pick up the wings and go there? Or? No, I, I drove to Cats. Right there. Um, Would you drive the Subaru? Right. Car choice. I just on the with the Volvo seat, like just, you know, I can't do it with my foot. Okay. Um, so the, we're talking about wings. Did you guys go pick wings. up wings? Or? Yeah. So we get there, and we're. Calling around, seeing what's up. James is getting home with Jimmy John's. Um, and we're like, oh, don't eat all of it. He's like, oh, I'm hungry now. Do all that post-gym crap thing. <laughs> so he grabs, eats half of his sandwich, and then we go, Cat and I, the two of us in my car, we go to Buffalo Wild Wings. Do you remember which one? I couldn't tell you. Okay. I don't know. Um, it had to be east, right? That's close to the yeah. edge. It's by a mall. Not the east one, then. It's by a mall. It is a mall. Um, we go in, we get the wings, we go out. We go to Cats, we eat. Um, we watched this movie, Pretty in Pink or something. It's about a girl with, that likes fashion and goes to Harvard. So, is that on Netflix or is normal TV? They have like everything there. I didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> All right, so we get the wings at Cats. Watch Pretty in Pink. Yeah, it's what it is an mom's choice, but um. Uh, the four of us, had yeah, we all ate. Okay. And then went upstairs and laid down in her bed for a few minutes. Just letting the food settle or yeah. hanging out? Yeah. Uh, Notice she's kind of falling asleep. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm ready to get out of here. And I go home, get the girls all ready for bed, going outside. Get them water. What time do you think you made it home? Say nine. Okay. At the latest. And then 
bags of pearls. Water, you know, not really food, they could eat before, but water. And play, like, indoor playtime and yeah. bathroom. Sure. So. Did you guys go to, so you were home alone then? Um, I've been home alone this whole weekend, really, except when Cat comes. Yeah, yeah. So Cat didn't come that night. So now we're, we're pushing Wednesday, aren't we? Um. What time do you think you went to bed on Tuesday night? Um, probably pretty dang close to when I got home. Ten at the latest. Okay. Yeah. Kind of been tired. Lately, sure. Um, then the morning on Sunday. Or no, wait. Where are we? Wednesday. Already. Wednesday. Okay, so Wednesday. Um, I try to go to the farm. I keep spamming Cress and spamming Cress. I kind of need someone to talk to because freaking out about my parents. Um, Jane's calling me. I give her the address to go to the farm. Or to the to the cabin, Jane, Jane Helgendorf. Um, never picked up from Cress, so I go home. Um, Did you drive over to the farm or? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because she wasn't answering her phone, right? So no, I, I got close, but then I realized I can't just show up. They they'd shoot me. I don't know what I drive. What it looked like with a hat on. They got guns over there? Or would they actually shoot you? No, I'm just saying. He li- her is dad he lives there. He's he's 90. He he got a buck when he was 95 or something. And so I, I know if he didn't know who I was, he could have. Yeah. So he, he's, he's old. But if he can use a gun. That's why I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. So Cress's dad lives there too. Yeah. Who's play, is it Cress's farm or dad's it's farm? It's her dad's. He built it. Oh, okay. And then she lives there. there. She's okay. managing the property because he's in a chair. Yeah, he's old. Um, so then, it's, it's not really the farm, it's a, it's a farm like hobby farm. Yeah, yeah, okay, I gotcha. They I just haven't ever been there. Let before. wildflowers grow for the, the bees, that's pretty much it. And their own berries, but it's um. Then here we are. I turn around, and then Jane calls. I get a picture of the property at the cabin. And I see that. So I'm looking at the cabin. And then it doesn't look right. There's a birch tree in in front, and I I didn't like the look of it because mm-hmm. that didn't. It didn't just sit right with me a little bit, but I, it looked like tracks were pushed down into the grass a little bit, I don't know, in the picture. And Mike said there was like light tracks, like someone was there. Where was the birch tree at? It looked like it was in the middle of the drive. And sometimes we do do that. We, we find a fallen log and we put it like a, you know, a double door entrance. Mm-hmm. So you go in from the gate, you park, you move the next, and then you drive. Yeah, sure. So that's like the only security we can get up there. Um, some we have done that before. The grass is overgrown, but that's from the storm and the fallen trees. Mm-hmm. You can't mow there because the flowers. with the birch tree I mean if you guys typically put stuff down like security why why did it look weird to you this time I've never seen that log we have okay. we have this log that's One that you close to the shed it's I would say closer to petrified than rotten it's hard like really hard yeah I don't know what kind of tree but that's what my dad and I use when we go so you typically use the same tree, this one just seemed out of place too. Yeah, it. that's not the tree we use. Gotcha. Um, where are we? Wednesday morning, uh, Jane sends you a picture of the cabin. You see the birch tree and it looked All right. right to you. Then I go to the police station. 
babies, I ask her, when should I make a thing, a uh, point, or a uh, uh, I'm sorry. No worries, man. What? Wednesday morning, you said you went to the police department. Yeah, to make a... I'll talk to him about my parents. And um, then I met with three sheriffs. Okay. Three, you said? Three. There was a Sealy. He's bearded. The guy that drove me here. I'm not sure the name. And then Collins. Uh, she was also Collins. doing canvassing. Mm -hmm. So canvassing. So here we are. Throws three. I get the questions answered. Then, oh, then we go to my house, and then there's three more, the same three sheriffs. Um, so they talk to you at the police station or wherever you get... You yeah, I get the information and stuff. And then they came to your house. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. that's probably about, then I came a couple hours later. They were there questioning, you're here now questioning, mm -hmm. and then that night, they... What night are we on? Wednesday. Wednesday night. I um, go to Dan and Mary's. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. What time do you think? They feed me um, at probably 7, 7.30. And you said you went to? Dan and Mary Sesto, or Mary Sesto and Dan something a bitch. So, so. so Mary Sesto's house. Mary Sesto's house. It's, it's um, on the same road. As Pretty yours? Much. Yeah. Okay. They just up the curves. Around the corner. For dinner you went there? Yeah. Well, they just fed me. They didn't eat. Okay. They just wanted to brainstorm. Any good ideas come out of it? No. Okay. So you said you we went... only could think of Dan and Dan's been here. Yeah. So you said you went to the, the police department to talk about your parents. What? Just tell me what exactly did you talk about? your parents with the deputies about? Oh, we're making a report. A okay. report. That I thought I had to do that at a, at a station. Okay. And you were reporting, like, what were you reporting exactly? Just, I just want to write down and yeah. have it on there. Uh, they're missing this. Okay. They're missing this. Okay. Gotcha. And as far as, as far as you know, um, I mean, were you able to tell? We've gone into a lot of detail last night and tonight, right? Yeah. Do you think that you gave them as much information as you've given me, or do you think that we've you've kind asked of gone way into more questions? Yeah. So you've been asked about my injuries, yeah. the bleeding in the fireplace. Yeah. Um, the sheriffs kind of gave what they need to make reports, and you've just asked about like home life, everything, right? Okay. Uh, so you you got more in depth, yeah. I think um, Wednesday here we are, and throughout the weekend I've been calling. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just kind of look at some things here. So we started Wednesday. Um, Mom had work. You and your dad watched Wheel of Fortune. I'm just gonna kind of read stuff back through a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we kind of ended it last night because that's I've been talking to you since then, you know, so I don't think there's much else that I need you to tell me from last night. Um, so watching Wheel of Fortune, uh, you're on the couch, table downstairs, or couch with the back to the table downstairs, and I'm tossing the, the ball around for the dog and broke the glass fireplace. Um, your foot gets hurt, Dad gets mad. Right? Yeah. Mom left for work in the morning, comes home later on. Um, dog was fine, not injured at all. Was it the dog or the ball that crashed into the glass? Both. The ball bounced it, but the, the okay. dog hit it with the shoulder. Okay. That's how it broke. It, it went to, the ball went to the it. Yeah, probably not. Okay. Um, all right. Um, playing games, watching YouTube, job search. I'm just going to still reading out loud, just make sure I don't have any questions. Um, 
You guys typically make your beds every day? Look like they were made yesterday when I was there. Yes. Okay. We usually use sheets every few days in beds. You change the sheets every day? Every few. Yeah. They get changed. I was say, that's cool. In the bases. Or the dog hair, it's kind of hard to sleep. Yeah, they probably do have some pretty long hair. In the heat, they should. Um, but... Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah talking, no, sorry. That's, no, that's fine. Um, I get it. I got a dog. He sheds too, but you got two of them. <laughs> you know? Alright. As far as... As far as the blood on your foot... Um, how did you clean that up? So we we were talking, you got... You had blood on... Swiffer wet foot. Okay. Super wet jet. And where did you get that from? Cat let me borrow it. Um, where is it at now? I returned it to Cat. And. Yeah. I don't know where it's at now. He just brought it back. Um, gave it back to her. Um, <laughs> did you use anything else? Hydrogen peroxide. For the, the tiles and the hard floors. Um, just the big globs needed a little bit. Hydrogen peroxide. Did that seem to help get rid of the blood? Well, it hurt my foot, uh, that stuff. Um, but it didn't really help. Okay. It kind of just made a mess. And when you say only on tiles, I'm trying to remember your house. I couldn't do carpet with it. It yeah. would ruin the carpet, right? It would. I, I think so. Um, um, tiles, are we talking kitchen? Because downstairs yeah. is just like cement. Well, when I had some blood on the basement, I used the peroxide. Okay. Basement floor and tiles in the kitchen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I peroxided. There it wasn't as much. Like, there weren't... Like, this size pools in the kitchen. Okay. I was pinching it pretty dang hard, but which was also cutting deeper because yeah. I had another, I might still have another piece of glass. Is so, that the biggest pool that you saw was something? This was downstairs. Okay. This was kind of on the stone, close to the glass, and then there was one right at the base, kind of where the chairs I put. Okay. Like a good... Like, Two three inch diameter. Two three inch diameter. Okay. Um, more than that. Um, Did you do anything to? So I wrote down on Tuesday that you tried getting the glass cleaned up in the basement. Um, tossed it in the glass or glass and recycling. Did you clean up at all when it actually happened? No, my dad was furious. So, you just uh, so he he did stuff to clean it. Yeah, I don't know what he did, but I he sent me to my room upstairs, and he did whatever he did. But it still was on the floor after he was done. Okay. Um. Did your dad get injured at all when the glass broke? Did he step on any? Or he sent me up, but I. Don't doubt it. And he gets mad. He's not thinking. So uh, we don't know if your dad got hurt. No. Okay. No. But my best guess is that guy reached in the fireplace and cut off his arm or something. I don't know. Uh, okay. What's up? Uh, head pain? Do you guys have like Tylenol or something? I know you guys can't really yeah, offer yeah, anything yeah. like that. But like a headache? Yeah, we've been getting the migraines from all of the, the hits and stuff. Yeah, um, we can try and give you something. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right, so cleaning up the blood, we just got the Swiffer and the, and the hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, um, just kind of smeared it around. There's, okay. uh, there's another uh, paper toweling. Yeah, uh, just that. Okay. And then there's, I don't know. Where did all those paper towels go? 
Just some trash. Yeah. Um, some. Just everywhere. My car trash. In my. My trash. Um, they ended up in the car trash? There's a bag in the car that I carry around. It's a car trash. Oh, okay. It's like a gallon bag. Okay. That's more portable than the garbage can. So, yeah, bloody rag after bloody rag, just trying to get it all up. And, mm -hmm. I don't know, it was, it was a lot. I I didn't feel sick, so it couldn't have been that much, right? Yeah, you didn't lose enough to pass out or anything. Is there any reason to believe mom or dad's blood would be somewhere in the house? Have they been injured at all that you're aware of? Well, my dad scratches his psoriasis till he, like, gushes blood. Okay. Gushing. Um, Describe gushing to me. Enough to run down your leg, like, um, like, cover your leg, I suppose. Like, he has it on his knee. So when he does this, it just, like, rips oh, down and I, I ask him to stop but he doesn't do it when he's stressed out yeah he, he just kind of like it's his tick he's just, yeah probably itches does he um like does it enough to get on the floor does it leave oh yeah yeah like how much like before we were talking the water bottle lid and the yeti lid is there i mean like are we talking puddles like that or just oh. ribbons or it could be enough Okay. But I'm thinking yeah, he lit if he's there and I don't catch him soon enough. Oh jeez. My ma's blood. Um just from her bloody noses she gets sometimes when she wakes up. Uh, that's why we've been doing uh, the dehumidifier or humidifier and dehumidifiers. Yeah. Probably downstairs you get the we have, we have to do multiple of them, but she can't be in the living room too long because that's a dehumidifier. And you know, if she does, her nose gets bad. Not like a regular one, she gets it bad. Um, but she either goes to the kitchen to fix it, her vanity, or the bathroom. Um, when she has bloody noses, are we talking, or is it just spraying around? Is it just dripping? Well, it's not squirting, but it's just dripping, and she ocean. doesn't notice it. Okay. She can't feel it anymore. Okay. Um, Is there any reason to believe that in either one of their vehicles there would be any of their blood? Their vehicles? Yeah. Or anybody's vehicle, let's say that. Um, maybe car yeah. trash. Mom's car trash would definitely, the past few days. Mm -hmm. My dad's car trash. Why would, um, why would they have blood in their car trashes? Well, my mom does the bloody noses with the air conditioning. So oh, okay. In the when we have air conditioning, my mom will will have to use um, uh, bring towels and stuff yeah. because in the hot days you can't have your windows open. You'll you won't drive well. No. So air conditioning, my mom will have nose boots. Um, my dad hasn't had them as much as she does, but he gets them. Okay. Um, his are worse than my ma's. Does but, she ever get them in the house then, or? Um, mostly just with air conditioning, okay. but sometimes, sometimes with a dehumidifier. Okay. Me, personally, just in air conditioning. Mm -hmm. I get them, but I'm not as bad as my parents. I, it's um, not bad. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm just right now. I'm just thinking it's kind of absorbing. I just want to make sure that I'm asking everything so I don't have to keep calling you and stuff. Oh, you know yeah. my brother? Is he okay? Mitch? Yeah, did he make it? I know, that's a long drive for he hasn't those called, two. Yeah, he hasn't called me at all, so I don't know. I don't I, think I, they've I, ever done a trip like that. So yeah, it's like three hours, three and a half. Yeah. Like Mitch, okay. 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 Um,
As far as up at the cabin, when do you think the last time you were up there? Personally, last year. Last year. Memorial Day, I believe. I think it wasn't the weekend before Memorial. I didn't make the parade. I never got to go last year. When do you think the last time your mom or dad were at the cabin before? My dad went when my brother was diagnosed with diabetes. When was that? The weekend before my concussion. So, one, two, three. Well, not including this week. Three, four. Yeah, four. Four weeks. Did you bring it up? Probably doing okay. He wasn't born with diabetes. Then. No, this was. Okay. It gets the kind you're born you with. In June of this year, like three, four weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. He went up. Notice. Uh, our plumbing's gone to crap, and he bought a new uh, set or something at a, a flea farm or a Home Depot, or it's like a it's like a four-way converter type thing for the plumbing, okay. something for the cabin. Yeah, for the cabin. It's for like a toilet, or yeah, we have, we have a toilet up there actually now. Nice. Um, Not just an outhouse. No, there is an outhouse. Yeah, you want an aspirin? Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Adderall. Adderall. Cool. What do you say? I got Adderall. That work? Yeah. Cool. I was like, I thought you said Adderall. No, I don't. No, no, that. Not, not that. Just Adderall. <laughs> just over the counter stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Like three of them work. Yeah. Appreciate it. You bet. I'll drop my Thanks, Jim. Yep. You say Adderall on them, right? You put them on, you put them on your mouth already. <laughs> They're there. They are. No, I just got uh, so the plumbing went through crap. Serum. <laughs> no, no. Is it is just it like uh, the, the, was it a sink or a toilet or what was it with the plumbing that went bad? Um, so when we have to pour water in every time we go up to start the pump. Oh, okay. So some reason by pouring water in, the water never rose in the toilet bowl apparently, so you couldn't flush it. You know, it, it, the water didn't come to the toilet. Mm -hmm. um, so he needed a new thing to stop whatever the problem was. I think leaking. I don't know. I didn't hear everything from him. Sure. How did he find out about that? He? Yeah. How did he know that there was a plumbing issue up there? Well, he went up there just to go see the cabin. Oh, so when he went up a couple of weeks ago, he realized an issue. This time, he wanted to fix it. Yeah, well, he fixed the the major issue, so it won't be flooding the. The house, okay. The cabin. Now, he wanted the pipe set to redo it. Okay. Because we we need new pipes because they're lead. And I think we might be moving to plastic because there's no water heat. We can do plastic. Yeah. Well. Um. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what that part was. But that was when Mitch Diabetes, the, the number one. Did Mitch go up there with him? When no. Well, okay. my mom and I were kind of with Mitch all that weekend okay, doing so stuff. Dad just went to Wallen. Yep. And then later that week, I had my fall. And I, I just started getting my memory back. Okay. So... <laughs> Where did the, his mom been up there this year at all? Mom has not been up there this year. Maybe they were up there before. Uh, no, I think Dad, Dad did it all himself. Maybe. I think this is first. And Mitch hasn't been in the cabin in a while, right? Today? Oh, well, longer than today. Yeah, I, I couldn't say he's been there. He didn't go last year. Okay. Does he kind of do his own thing, or? Um, Mitch hasn't lived with us, or, you know, like, he's got a family now, a oh, dog or girlfriend, no kids, but cool. it's kind of, you know, uh, opposite side of time. You know how it yeah. is with brothers. Yeah, uh -huh. He's flew the coop. Um, <laughs> got a few of myself. Yeah. All right. I've started thinking about that myself, and my parents are trying to figure that out with me. Mm-hmm. Okay.
We got all the background, I think, right? Yeah, I think so. So, I think it's time we start talking about what happened to your parents. Mm -hmm. Like the truthful version. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we what? have like 20 pages of writing. We're going to start with a clean, white piece of paper for you to start telling the truth. Okay. What? Because, listen, listen to me. This is the only chance you're going to have to tell us the truth. Okay. Okay. What? We, listen, listen. I'm, I can't tell you what we know. But we know you're not telling us the truth. We know your parents are no longer with us. Okay, and we know the reason why. Okay, you need to tell the truth. There's... Listen, listen. You need to tell the truth about what happened and just tell us why it happened. Okay, if something happened, if you were defending yourself or if you just got uh, fed up with stuff, you need to tell us the truth, okay? This is your chance to tell us why. Okay, I'm not BSing you. Okay. So can we do that? Okay. You're okay. Um. There'll be a pause. you what happened. You know what happened. You were there when it happened. We're not BSing you, okay? When it happened, can I? We know more I, than you think we know. I understand. But there's people that have told us things. We have, we have evidence. We have proof that more has happened, okay? So your parents never made it to the cabin, and I think you know that. Pause. I just have a few on a stand up and just bring it over here for me. Do you have any in your pockets at all? Wallet. Just a wallet to just bring it for us. Oh, thanks. Faith in the corn corners. What's this right there? Faith in the corn corners. Okay. So they, they won't take the vape down in the jail. Okay. You just took it. Oh, that's a base and a coin first. No, oh, it's in. Oh, in. I got you. Okay. So, I'm just gonna make sure you don't have it. After this interrogation, Chandler asked for an attorney and he was shortly arrested after. Chandler was initially placed under arrest for providing false information regarding a kidnapping, and they were unable to charge him with the killing itself because at this point, the torso had not yet been confirmed to belong to his father, Bart. But what's even crazier is that at one point Chandler says that he didn't feel bad about what he did. A short time later, the remains were confirmed and identified to belong to Chandler's father, Bart. Authorities say he was shot once before his body was dismembered. Further inspection found evidence that Bart was shot while he was still alive, but that the dismemberment occurred after his death. I mean, thank God. Talk about a silver lining. Imagine if the dismemberment happened while he was still alive. And not much later, investigators received even more information. On July 10th, 2021, another woman reported seeing a young man on July 3rd, around 20 to 30 years old, walking away from a car and walking up the highway. The complaint says that he was wearing a backpack and after he approached the highway, he turned around and went back to his car. That struck her as very odd because his vehicle was parked by the woods. So why was he walking up and down the highway into the woods with a backpack and then back out to his car? Upon investigation and stepping into this wooded area, the detective observed a human leg severed near the thigh area. Next to the intact leg appeared to be a larger chunk of rotten human flesh, possibly a piece of a thigh. 
in the same area was a left foot. Pieces and pieces of human remains. About 10 to 15 feet southeast of where the leg was found, a slightly bigger than a football-sized body part was also located, and there was a bone protruding from it, and it appeared to be another severed human body part. Altogether, four pieces of human remains were found. Two human legs, one that was separated into three pieces. Three pieces, guys. The remains were sent to the state crime lab, and they were shortly after identified belonging to his mother, Krista. Detectives also later found Bart's driver's license and Krista's driver's license, as well as their cell phones, wrapped up in a paper towel and tin foil inside the garage. Why foil? I mean, did Chandler think that the foil would be like a barrier for towers or cell signals to get to it? I don't quite understand that piece of it, so if you have any insight, please let me know in the comments. Authorities then also searched Chandler's Google searches and his account. And what's so crazy about this whole thing, and pretty self-incriminating if you ask me, is that on July 8th, he had searched things like body found in Wisconsin and woman's body found in Wisconsin and Wisconsin dismembered body found and body found in Milwaukee River 2021 and Bart and Krista. Some of these Google searches occurred before they even found the body of Krista. Self-incriminating, my man. Self-incriminating. Investigators also say that they found a Target bag with bloody rags on the property where Bart's remains were found. Chandler's then-girlfriend later testified that she had brought the bag to the home because she had picked up items from Target and left it there. Not that she was involved in any sort that we know of or knew anything that was going on, but that she had simply left that bag behind. So now, what would be the motive for executing such a gruesome and personal crime on your two parents? Well, apparently, it all stemmed back to Chandler and his lies about his life. Remember, he was going to SpaceX, he was a student, full-time, working as well, his parents were so proud. Well, apparently, Chandler lied to his parents, saying that he had that job waiting for him at SpaceX in Florida. He was lying about the job, and he was also lying about attending school. And apparently, his father, Bart, found out. Chandler's ex-girlfriend also testified that she, too, thought Chandler was going to school at a tech school and working in an insurance company and was then going to ultimately be working for Elon Musk. All lies. All lies. Lied to everybody. While detectives continued to gather evidence and the prosecution was building their case against Chandler, they discovered more ties of Chandler to these two gruesome murders. Chandler bought two large bags of ice from a quick trip at around 8.30 p.m. on July 1st, the day before this road trip was supposed to have taken place, and the day before Krista didn't show up to work. Later that night, too, neighbors had reported smelling a pungent odor in the air while footage from a security camera facing the home showed flickering light coming from inside the house's family room, where the fireplace is located. And that detail is very important, and I'll get to why in just a minute here. Additionally, the very next morning on July 2nd, the day that this whole road trip getaway was supposed to, you know, be in motion, Chandler was recorded walking into a fleet farm. Surveillance video showed Chandler wandering the aisle where the store keeps its tarps. Chandler bought a 6x8 silver and black heavy-duty tarp with a receipt showing the purchase taking place at 7.21 a.m. that day. But remember, he says that they left at 5 a.m. that day. A similar tarp was later discovered in a shed at the property where Bart's remains were found, and the tarp appeared to have multiple blood stains on it, which were then tested for DNA, and the testing the DNA confirmed that that DNA belonged to both Bart and Krista on that tarp. Denise Jones from the Wisconsin State Crime Lab testified that she tested a number of items and swabs taken from inside the family home as part of the investigation. Using DNA samples from Bart, Krista, Mitchell, and Chandler, she was able to determine whose blood and DNA was on several items found by investigators. That included a pair of Brooks shoes that were found in the family's garage. Investigators previously had testified that they found what appeared to be dried blood on the sole and the tongue of the shoe. In addition to testing the bloodstains, authorities also swabbed inside the heel of the shoe to see who typically wore these shoes. She said that her tests revealed that both Bart and Krista's DNA was found on the bloodstains on the shoes, and that the swab inside the shoe to see who was wearing it revealed that it was Chandler who was wearing them. 
Bart's DNA was also found on a bloodstain inside the family's garbage bin and a broken saw blade recovered from the farmhouse. Both Bart and Krista's DNA were found from blood on the scissor blades, a handsaw blade, pruning shears, as well as several locations on an axe that was discovered in the family garage. The axe head, the hilt where the axe head meets the handle, and the top of the axe. I mean, blood everywhere. This was a hands-on, gruesome, gruesome crime. And now this was damning evidence, tying Chandler to the murder and to the dismemberment of his two parents. But what about that flickering fireplace that I mentioned? Well, apparently Chandler decided to discard their remains in these wooded areas after a failed attempt to burn them in the family fireplace. Truly disgusting. He dismembered them, tried to burn them in the fireplace, and when he realized that that wasn't working, he had to go to plan B and he drove them off site and tried to hide them in rural wooded areas. Chandler's brother Mitchell also testified, and in his testimony, he says that Chandler was given a rifle and 400 rounds of ammunition in June by a friend that he played video games with. Mitchell claimed that the gun was the same type of gun that he also used in his video games that were all about shooting people. Taking his video games and making it real life. It's awful. It's awful. Chandler was ultimately charged with first-degree intentional homicide in the death of Bart, false information on kidnapped missing persons, mutilating, and hiding a corpse. Then, after his mother's body parts were later found, the complaint was amended to add similar charges relating to her death. During court, graphic photos of Bart's shirtless, headless torso were shown, and apparently Chandler appeared to have zero emotion, seeing his decapitated father's body part no emotion. Which, I mean, if you are somebody who can actually execute that act and do such a heartless evil thing, I would imagine you would probably have no emotion. But to me, this stands out that it wasn't just a rage crime or a crime of passion or, you know, a brief psychotic break because he's not even remorseful at this point. At least pretend to be a remorseful guy. At least pretend you were, you know, you were having a nervous breakdown or something happened, but no, showing zero emotion or remorse. The trial is currently ongoing, and Chandler is charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating and hiding a corpse, and giving false information to authorities. This trial has been going on now for a couple of weeks, and the trial is now delayed but expected to resume on January 18th at the very earliest because Chandler got COVID. And we know the court systems already are so delayed because of all everything happening with COVID. But now he, in fact, has COVID. So the trial is expected to resume on the 18th, but it's not confirmed. And that will be the absolute earliest that it will resume. So guys, first of all, make this make sense. Who can be this evil? We haven't seen something like this in a pretty long time. Actually, since it was what the head, uh, that guy decapitated and killed his parents. And I think he put the head in the pot on the stove or something like that last year. But like... This is crazy and it is overkill. It's like you're killing them, then you're dismembering them, you're trying to burn them in the fireplace, then you're disposing of them. It's just so hard to wrap your mind around. There are so many people talking about this and there is so much evidence coming to light and I can't wait for the trial to resume in a few days here because I am going to be following it like glue. So if you want to stay updated, make sure you come back, subscribe if you haven't already so that you get notified of those updates. And I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of this crime? Does it take a true psychopath to do something like this? Was he really that angry at his father for calling him out on lying about his job and his schooling and all that? It's like, bro, you got yourself in that position by lying. Like, you have nobody to be mad at but yourself unless you're a true sociopath and a psychopath. And it's just... Oh my gosh, like, can you even imagine? At tw- He was 23 years old when this occurred. He's now 24. Like, wow, wow. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm going to keep you updated. I'm going to be following the case. So again, make sure you come back if you want to see those updates. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in with me today. I hope you enjoyed the coverage. If you did, please support the channel by hitting that like button on your way out and subscribing if you haven't done so already. And until the next case, stay safe.